Vents like these have been explored, but not in this region and not by a team like this. The research vessel that they use can dive three kilometers deep, and the dives have all been live streamed, as you can see in this footage from yesterday. They're studying why these octopus are flourishing here, and they're potentially, they've potentially discovered an entirely new species of octopus as well. It's all happening just off the coast of Costa Rica. The team is mostly women, and half of them are locals. And joining us now from the research vessel off the coast of Costa Rica, we've reached Rachel Lauer. She's an associate professor in the Department of Geoscience at the University of Calgary. Rachel, it's great to have you. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for your interest in this awesome expedition. Yeah, so why is it so awesome? How big a deal is this? Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest part of this expedition, probably the most important part, is helping us to understand our oceans. And on a local scale for Costa Rica, 90, greater than 90% of Costa Rica is the deep ocean. So it's really important for them to understand the dynamics of that ocean. And on a global scale, this is one of two or three, three places in the world that we have enough data to really understand the dynamics of the seafloor and the overlying ocean, um, in particular, enough to potentially identify places like the one that we found on this crew, which, cruise, which is the third octopus nursery identified mm -hmm. on Earth. Um, and that is a um, cracks that where the octopus are laying their eggs and brooding and um, protecting those eggs. Um, there are three sites in the world where we've actually found this. And in this case, 10 years ago was when we located it. We came back here and were concerned that these eggs would not be viable. And mm. in the course of this cruise, we have actually witnessed hatching of those eggs. So they are indeed viable. Oh, wow. um, and this is um, a healthy octopus nursery. All right, so the vents that, that, that they're around, what are they? Yeah, so I, you actually summed it up pretty well. The, um, the vents are um, extinct volcanoes, so they are likely formed when new ocean crust is made. And that happens primarily at mid-ocean ridges where new plates are formed through extrusion of lava, um, they move away from the ridge as they age and get a little bit cooler. Um, those little mountains that stick up are mm. ultimately covered in lots of sediment. And in this place, that crust is about 20 million years old. And at this point, oh. the only places where the ocean is in communication with the ocean crust below is through these seamounts because the blanket of oh. sediment doesn't allow water to be exchanged with the ocean. So in these systems, what you have in this particular region is 11 seamounts or outcrops, which are just small <laughs> seamounts or small volcanoes that stick up through the sediments and allow water to go in one place, heat up in the crust, in the Earth's crust, and then come out warmed at another place. Oh, and where okay. Out, yeah, where it comes out and, and is warm um, is where we're finding these octopus are laying their eggs and in the brooding position, um, protecting their clutches of eggs in, in large numbers. And I also mentioned that, that, that you, you may have maybe discovered a new species of octopus. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, when this, when 10 years ago, there was a serendipitous discovery. We were more here to think about the, that process of hydrothermal circulation, water going in and out of the crust um, and the physics behind that. and located all of these octopus. And one of the scientists who's here, um, who's a, sort of the world's expert on octopus, saw the videos from our paper and said, well, they shouldn't be there because the oxygen levels in warm water um, should not be supporting um, the eggs that are um, thought to be viable um, or inviable. And so what that essentially allowed us to do was come back, relocate the site, um, find those breeding octopus, and, and actually confirm that that hypothesis was not correct. Um, these octopus are, in fact, viable. And, um, yeah, I think that that's incredible. Uh, Rachel, yeah. we, we don't have a ton of time left, but yep. you're obviously doing a lot of learning out there. What do you yes. think eventually will happen with this information? That's a great question. Um, I think the 
the information that's gathered from this cruise is in across many different disciplines. We have about seven different disciplines represented on this ship in biology, ge geophysics, hydrogeology, policy. We have two artists in residence on the ship, so it's truly a transdisciplinary cruise. And the fun part is figuring out how to piece together all of the different parts of those research. Um, and see how they fit together because to really understand a system like this where it's really hard to do work, it's really hard to gather data, you really need to leverage um, the intersection of all the disciplines that are here in producing your advances in, in understanding um, these complex systems. So um, that's what we're talking about now. We're thinking about what papers will come out of this and, and next steps will be coming back here in December. We deployed a lot of instrumentation at the seafloor. Um, so a lot of those time series of data will be recovered um, in December. Rachel, this is so fascinating. Thank you so much for telling us about it. Thank you so much for having me.